Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you a pretty cool little Edge TX snippet on how you can use the radio to confirm that your pack voltage is good before you arm your model. If you're anything like me when you're at the field, you probably keep a cell checker handy so you can check your pack voltage before you go fly. In the case of this little three cell battery, I'm at 11.25 volts or 3.77 per cell. And these are great. I always use these before I put a battery in a plane to make sure that the battery's topped off and I'm gonna get the flight time I expect. However, it's very easy to get distracted. You pick up another battery that is actually fully charged and you say, oh, there's the one I wanted. That one's 4.15 volts per cell. I'm gonna use this one to fly. And then somebody comes up and talks to you and while they're talking to you and you're picking up, you start organizing things and then you set down the wrong battery and this is the one that goes in the plane. So that's bad because if that happens when you go fly, you're either going to not get the flight time you expect it, at the best case or the worst case, you could hit a low voltage cutoff when you didn't expect to. So what I'm gonna do is show you a cool little trick on Edge TX where we can use just a very small amount of logic to have the radio actually check our pack voltage before we fly and prevent you from arming your model if your voltage isn't where it's supposed to be before you take off. Okay, let's get started. As you can see on the radio, I've got voltage and this voltage is being supplied by my desktop power supply so I can turn it up and down for testing. One number I wanna point out is 5.5. That's my threshold. Your threshold may be anything you want. It can be 12.2, it can be 11.8, it can be any number you want. I'm using 5.5 so I can use a desktop power supply to show you the transitions above and below my threshold. All that really matters is that you come up with a threshold that matters to you and you configure your radio that way. In my case, my threshold is 5.5. Right now, I have voltage of 4.8 coming in on the radio. I'm gonna reach over to my power supply and turn the voltage up a little bit, and we're gonna go up to six volts. So there is six volts. It just takes a minute to register on the radio, and there we go, we've got six volts on the radio. And now what I'll do is scroll back down, and we'll set it down below 5.5. That is below my threshold, so right now I've got five volts, and I'm just showing you that so you see that I can control the voltage going into the radio. Okay, at five volts, that represents a battery that's charged at a level below our threshold. Okay, that's all it means, it's below our threshold. Whatever your threshold is, it's below it. The first thing I'll do is move my throttle and you can see on channel three, which is my throttle channel, there is no movement. Now I'm going to arm the model. This is my arming switch right here, it's the SH switch. I'm gonna click that forward. Pack voltage low, arming disabled. And I got an audio prompt that said, pack voltage low, arming disabled. I will put the audio prompts for this entire setup in my Discord in the Edge TX channel. I'm not gonna post them anywhere else, so don't ask. Okay, so I've armed the plane, but notice when I move my stick, I still don't see any movement on that channel three. It's not happening because I'm below my threshold. Now I will disarm the model. It's now disarmed. And I'm gonna bring my voltage up above my threshold. So this will represent the battery that is fully charged. It's above our threshold. Okay, so we'll set it at six volts and then I'll move my throttle stick and you can see I still have no movement on channel three, right? No movement there. But now when I hit my arming switch, the radio says pack voltage is good. And when I move my stick, we see output on my throttle channel. Pretty cool, right? So what this does again is if your pack voltage is below your threshold and your threshold can be whatever number you wanna set, if it's below that value, the radio won't even arm. If it's above that value, it will arm, and you get some audible prompts to tell you what's going on. All right, let me show you how it works. But first, for you electronics gurus and tinkerers out there, check out PCBWay.com. PCBWay has a full suite of services available to make your ideas a reality, including PCB manufacturing and assembly, CNC machining, 3D printing, and injection molding. When you're ready to order, PCBWay provides instant quotes, real-time production tracking, and you can order as few as five boards at a time, which is great for early stage projects. If you need an experienced partner to help bring your ideas to life, check out PCBWay.com. I have a link in the description if you'd like to give them a look. This is actually a very simple configuration, only three logical switches and a couple of special functions. Logical switch number one says when RX bat is greater than 5.5 and the S8 switch is pushed forward, this is an interesting condition because what this indicates is that we have telemetry and our battery voltage is greater than our threshold. Remember that threshold I told you about, 5.5? And remember, you can put any value in there that you'd like. 
So for example, if you're flying a three cell battery and you say, if my battery is lower than 12 volts, I don't even wanna arm the plane because that means the battery is not peaked. It should be peaked at about 12.6, right? So if you already down a half a volt, maybe you don't even wanna start the flight. So the, remember the threshold can be any number you want. Again, we're evaluating whether or not our battery voltage is greater than 5.5 for this example and the arm switch is activated. So whatever your arm switch is, mine is SH away. Whatever yours is, that's the one you wanna put in this AND field. And I'll give you a look at the logical switch configuration just so you can see it. So there we go, the function is A is greater than X. The V1 value I have for the receiver I have is RX bat. A lot of times when I make these videos, people say I don't have RX bat or I don't have V bat or R bat one or whatever. In order for this to work, you have to have telemetry and that telemetry comes from your receiver. In this video, I'm not covering how to set up telemetry, so you need to be able to get your flight pack voltage into your radio. That can be covered in other material. That's not a subject for today's video. In my case, I've already got the battery telemetry coming into the radio. So RX bat is my sensor. My V2 number is 5.5, that's your threshold. Can be any number you want. And the AND switch is SH away. All right, so that's logical switch number one. Logical switch number two is a sticky switch. And remember, sticky switches work just like a light switch on your wall. It can be either up or down. And the only way you can make it reset is by pressing the opposite direction. So if your light switch is up and you want the light off, you have to press it down. And if the light switch is off and you want it to be on, you have to push it up. That's what a sticky switch does. In this case, L02 goes active when L01 goes active. L01 can only go active when my voltage is above 5.5 and I hit my arm switch. So that's what allows L02 to go active. And the only thing that shuts L02 off is when I disarm the model. When I bring the SH switch down, that deactivates L02. I'll give you a look at that right now. My voltage is set at 6.1. I'm gonna go ahead and arm the model. So L01 will go active and then immediately after, so will L02. Pack voltage good. Okay, L01 went active because I'm above six volts and I pushed SH away. And because L01 went live right here, that sticky switch is activated. Now here's why this part is important. L02 is now the indicator on whether or not we're armed. The reason we do it this way is because as you fly and your battery voltage goes below your threshold, you don't want it to disarm your model. And I'll show you that by going back to the main screen and I'll bring the voltage down. So as I bring the voltage down below the threshold of 5.5, if you don't use that sticky switch, it is gonna disarm your plane. But in my case, it still works because L02 can only be deactivated when I disarm via the SH switch. All right, the last switch is L03. And the idea behind L03 is to give us an audible prompt in the event our pack voltage is below our threshold when we first try and arm the plane. And it also prevents an additional alert going on while you're flying if you drop below your threshold. We don't want that to happen either. So there are three conditions in L03. The first one is that the SH switch has to be away and L01 cannot be lit. So if L01 is not lit, that means we haven't satisfied the condition of being above our threshold voltage. In that case, this L03 is gonna light. The other thing that has to be true is L02 cannot be active. And the reason we do that is because if we didn't use this not L02 on the end, what will happen while you're flying is as your voltage drops below 5.5, L01 is gonna go off and this one will activate and it'll say, check your battery voltage. So we don't necessarily want that. We only want this alert when we first try and arm the plane. So I'm gonna bring my battery voltage down below our threshold. I have it set at five volts right now. And when I click away on the SH switch, L03 will go live because SH will be away. L01 is not satisfied and therefore L02 is not satisfied. So when I click this, L03 should go on immediately. Pack voltage low, arming disabled. Pack voltage low, arming disabled. Okay, that's the logic, that's all there is to it. The last bit are just a couple special functions to give you the audible prompts. And for special function number one, I say when we're not L02, we're overriding channel three, which is my throttle channel to a value of negative 100. Remember, when L02 is not lit, that's where we want the override. So right now, it's not lit, right? And that means I can't fly. If we look at the channel monitor, I can't move, we're still locked. The red line is the mixer. The blue line is the actual output. That's not moving because we're still locked. So when not L02, we're overriding channel three with a value of negative 100. 
When L02 goes active, remember, that's the situation where we've met our condition of being above our threshold and we activated our arm switch. That's when L02 goes active. That's when things get hot. We have one little prompt that says your battery levels are good. So I'm going to bring the battery voltage up over our threshold right now. And there we go. We're above the threshold. And when I activate this, we'll see L02 will go live and it'll play the track battery level good. Pack voltage good. Pack voltage good. Okay, we'll disarm the model one more time, and I'm going to drop the voltage down below our threshold. So I have it set now at 5 volts, and when I activate this, L03 will go active. Remember, L03 goes active when we try and arm the model, and we haven't met the condition of our voltage, and we're not in flight losing voltage while we fly. So I'll go ahead and activate the arm switch. Pack voltage low, arming disabled. Pack voltage low, arming disabled. That's it. That's all you have to do to set this up. We'll wrap this video up by taking one last look at how it works. My pack voltage is 5 volts, and as you can see when I move my throttle stick, channel 3 doesn't move. I'll try and arm the model. Pack voltage low, arming disabled. Pack voltage low, arming disabled. When I move the throttle, channel 3 still doesn't move on the outputs. So we'll bring the stick down, disarm. We'll bring the voltage above our threshold of 5.5 volts. We'll bring it up to, say, 6 volts. And at 6 volts, we'll arm. Pack voltage good. Pack voltage good. And as I move the stick, you can see output on channel 3. And as I bring the voltage down below our threshold, this is the important part about the logic. We don't accidentally disarm our model. So now I've got my voltage down at 5 volts. And you can see as I move my throttle stick, we still have output on the throttle channel. That's it. How to use logic on Edge TX to make sure your flight pack voltage is where you want it before you take off. If you like this kind of content, make sure you smash that thumbs up button, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something.